Climate change concerns floated back into the headlines this week after an ice shelf roughly the size of Delaware broke off the coast of Antarctica. Scientists knew the break was coming sometime soon, and many disagree about how much climate change may have played a role. It's also unclear just how much it will ultimately affect sea levels. They say Boston is one of about 180 cities at risk of chronic flooding in just the next 15 to 20 years as a result of rising seas. Today, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh laid out a plan which in part aims to protect against threats like that and terrorism. It's the first citywide resilience strategy, but the main aim is focused on racial equity with the goal of providing equal opportunity to all Bostonians. Right now, as you know, the city is the sixth worst income inequality in the country, according to a Bloomberg analysis. With an eye toward getting our city lower on the list and eventually off it, the plan details equity goals for the city's institutions, services, the economy, education, and infrastructure needs. Boston Mayor Marty Walsh joins me now. Good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Along with Otis Rowley, a regional director with a group of 100 resilient cities. Pleasure to meet you, Otis. Thanks so much for being here. Did I accurately describe the mission of this deal? I think you did for the most part. I mean, it goes deeper than that. I mean, we're looking at uh, racial equity through the lens of housing, through the lens of job creation, through the lens of education, through the lens of what we rolled out in Imagine Boston 2030 uh, the other day. You know, you oversee, what, scores of cities, New York, Atlanta, New Orleans. I mean, are the problems he and the city confronts dramatically different? from the ones you see in other major American cities, Otis, or no? I wouldn't say dramatically different. I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of the stresses and shocks uh, throughout the United States. Um, but what's different here is the, the, the leadership um, and the vision in terms of how we're going to try to resolve some of those How's challenges. the leadership different here? You didn't mean well, just that it's a different person, or is there a oh, different no, no. qualitative I'm, thing? I mean qualitative. So one of the things that's really exciting about the resilience strategy is that the, the mayor and his team has, has said that we're going to try to address the challenges of globalization, urbanization, and climate change while doing it through a, a racial lens, right, a r racial equity lens. Well, and that's, that's different from many of our other cities. Let's say, you know, as I mentioned, you mentioned the introduction of this thing. It mentions catastrophic sudden events like flooding and terrorism, yeah. but we don't have time for those tonight. No. Let's focus on what, I don't mean that in a, in a weird <laughs> way. The, the report also says uh, it calls them slow-moving disasters like persistent racial and economic inequality. So let's touch on racial equity. Well, everybody watching knows Adam Jones and Michael Che. We've talked about that a lot. Let's go down one level. 95% uh, of the growth in this city the last 25 years, Latinos, not one Latino in the city council. Uh, African Americans in the city, $700 in assets on average. The average white family, quarter of a million. Mm -hmm. How does this resilience strategy affect those kinds of issues? Uh, a lot of it is systemic, systemic racism that these families have been dealing with for, for generations. Uh, and it's about how, how do we get families out of that, that, that cycle. How do we get families out of that cycle? There's a long way to go. I mean, it, it takes a lot of work. It takes making sure we provide opportunities. And, and, but I also think that we have to have other people. I can't be in this fight by myself. And people always say, what's the mayor going to do to resolve this? Uh, we need other people in Boston to understand what systemic racism is. We need other people in Boston to understand what white privilege is. We need other people in Boston to understand the challenges that we face as a city so we can lift everyone up. And it can't just be the city lifting people up. It has to be the private industry lifting people up as well. Yeah, and, and how well is this got private public sector attention? And we've, I've been hearing about this since I was about in diapers. You know, private public solutions to problems. That's a decent part of uh, what the mayor is proposing here. Mm -hmm. Does that work in these cities, or is it more rhetoric than real? No, no, it, it definitely works, and because the work can't be done solely by the public sector. Right? So if you look at some of the initiatives within, within the strategy, particularly the, the Resilience and Racial Equity Toolkit, it is, it is first um, kind of being applied at home, securing our own mask before mm -hmm. we secure the mask of the person sitting next to us in terms of the public sector trying to utilize it, but also the private sector has said that they will also participate in, in using that. And that addresses some of the things that the mayor was talking about a little earlier. Mr. Mayor, one of the other uh, topics, the headlines, bolded, equitable economic opportunities. I said in the open, we're sixth in income inequality of the 50 biggest cities. How do we address that? Uh, I think we address it by creating opportunity still. And the one thing I'll say, that there's a positive side to that, uh, that if you look at cities like um, Detroit, look at cities like San Francisco, uh, a lot of rich people living in the city, very very few poor people living in the city. It's hard to gauge income inequality there. In our city, at least we still have people that, that are poor people living in our city. We have to do everything we can to make sure they can stay in our city. We have to create more housing. We have to create more opportunities for employment. And we have to strengthen our school system. So there's ways of strengthening this. We have people that we, ha we can lift up in our city. Other cities don't have that. 
You know, another heading, which I think is really important, is collaborative community-led processes you talk about. On one hand, you've gotten, I think, a decent amount of praise for these racial dialogues, for example, yeah. you start around the city. And I've said on the air, you were not, when this Michael Che thing came up, which was pretty heavy, I should say, yeah. I didn't see you being defensive at all. You said you want to meet with him, et cetera. On the flip side about collaborative process, you've taken heat, Boston 2024. A lot of people thought, I'm amongst them, by the way, who thought it was top down, the community was involved too late rather than early on. Assuming that that is, whether you agree with it or not, uh, that's a fairly mainstream criticism, how do you do things, big projects like that, differently so there is a more collaborative, well, community-led well, process? I think the first thing, I mean, we partnered with Rockefeller to, to get this off the ground. Hunter, which which is, is the parent for all this, which, we should yeah, say. Yeah, which is 100 resilient cities. And now we're partnering with Heinz Foundation to train facilitators, where we're going to have facilitators out in the community. These aren't going to be led by the city. These aren't going to be led by political people. These are going to be led by average, everyday people that are going to be having these dialogues around the city of Boston, hopefully in every single corner of the city of Boston. And it's, you know, it's going to, we're talking thousands of dialogues over the next bunch of years. This is not an issue that's going to be resolved tomorrow. You mentioned the very beginning when you talked about Adam Jones and what happened with the next day at Fenway Park. This is about dealing with those issues. What, what we do in Boston is uh, when we hear something like that, we, we, the, the press goes you know, full, full throttle forward to get all the stories. And then after a couple of days, we kind of forget about what happened and we ignore it and we move on to the next, next topic until it happens again. It's time to address it. You know, I've heard the story of Denzel Washington that something he, he, encountered, he encountered somebody in the 80s here in Boston, in the late 80s, early 90s, and he still views Boston as a racist city. We have a problem perception-wise if that's the issue. Let's yeah, deal with it. When people hear this, I don't mean just Bostonians, but when mayors around the country who do say things like this, mm -hmm. the people buy, I mean, when you see uh, trust in institutions is in the toilet in this yeah. country, whether it's governments, whether it's banks, uh, the military and police are actually generally the only ones that do fairly well. And police don't do so well in such many communities. Do they believe that we can fix these problems? Um, well, I think the, the proof is in the pudding. Right? And what's really exciting about the strategy is that we're not just talking about it, but there are clear-cut initiatives to actually implement the changes that, we're, we're, that the rhetoric is talking about. So when you say that, you know, how do we make sure that the community is involved, we very much went outside the box in terms of community engagement and outreach. Over 11,000 participants. The, the mayor's you know, chief resilience. To get to this point. To get to, to this, get point. To this point. Right? But then the initiatives within the plan, one of them is around trauma, a community-based training for, for tra um, trauma that, that happens within the community. Mm -hmm. So it's not the outside trying to heal the inside, but that they're, they're healing together. When you first, when did you first meet him? I first met the mayor in November. Yeah. Did he yeah. ask you in any of these discussions, is anybody doing anything in these other cities that you oversee that might be? He did. Yes, he did. What is somebody doing in a major American city that he should be integrating into his shtick, his management style, his resilient strategy? Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting question because uh, this strategy uh, is actually something that I have every intention of utilizing in some of, many of our other cities. His. Yeah, yeah. The, the ours. city is ours. It's part of mine. It's not mine. It's ours. Yeah, no, but I'm talking and, about... And, and and should he be borrowing some strategies from other cities that you're overseeing? Um, as it relates to racial equity um, and the, the progress that we're trying to make, actually, I see there's a lot to learn from the other cities in terms of what, we're, what I see happening in Boston. That is not to say that there's not more work to be done here, right? But the, it's interesting in terms of the, the degree of community engagement and outreach and what we're talking about in terms of in public sector, in government and private sector outreach and support. Is, is actually groundbreaking. And this is a different, a different approach to, to, to resilience that in many ways Boston is in lead. Can we end with this? You mentioned Denzel Washington. I've only lived here 30 years. You've lived here your whole life. 50. I, I, Bill Russell's story, Bill we're Russell. still here. And by the way, we should. It was just yeah, horrible. Yeah, Bill Denzel Russell. Washington. Do you say when you go, I know what you got to say to the public, and I think you're a pretty honest character, <sighs> but do you say to yourself at night when you close the door, Maybe this can't be dealt with. We have such a no. long history no, here. I, I think Maybe it can. we just can't I, do I, it. I think it can because we have so many positive stories, too. You know, the first black hockey player to play in an NHL played for the Boston Bruins. He was here I, a I mean, so we, we, When you think about that, we have so many firsts. You know, the, 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 abol the, slave move, the, the abolitionist movement was here. I mean, so many things happened in our city that, that we, we, we should have a lot to celebrate. And it, that's what bothers me, that we have potentially a very good history to talk about, but yet... We have the bad side, and, and I think that in the negative side. So I think that it is the right thing. Now, people might say, you know, why are you tackling this issue? 
Why? Because it's important. Because it was brought up to me in 2013 as a candidate for mayor of Boston when a woman asked me a question about race and racism in Boston, and I stumbled on the answer, and I had to go back. We had a deep conversation about, uh, let's deal with this issue. And I think a mind can be changed. Good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I think a mind can be changed. I was I went to graduate school here. I might say. Yeah, and um, and my view of Boston has very much changed from it to, from what I had during graduate school. It's good to have you in our city, Otis. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for your time, gentlemen. I appreciate it.